Good morning, and welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Gina Maria Coverall, and I'm the interim pastor here at Messiah Lutheran. I welcome all guests for coming to worship this morning, and all, um, all friends of this parish. I invite you to please stand, and we begin with the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Let us come into the light, the revealing and healing light of God. Please take a moment of reflection. God of grace and glory, you have brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection. Yet our lives are still shadowed by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O oh God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. <coughs> Rejoice in all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts the light, puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sins, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out sin, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from all sin by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take this time to share the peace and then you may be seated. I guess.
The Lord be with you. O oh God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Let those 
those who hate God flee. Reading from 1 Peter, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are revealed for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
said. I'm going to kind of gather around here. Hi. Thanks for coming up. Have you guys ever been to a cemetery? You ever been to one? You ever see they got lots of flowers around? And maybe some of the, the, the gravestones that are there have one of these on it. You know what this is? What is this? American flag. Kind of a fancy one. But this is an American flag. Do you know why they got that on the stones? Oftentimes, it is because they were people who died serving our country. They're people who died so that we could be free, free to live where we want, free to worship where we want, free to say what we want. And we have a special holiday to honor those people, and you know what that's called? Memorial Day. Yep, that's tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we get that day off. <laughs> Those people died so that we could be free, but there's someone else who died so that the whole world could be free, not just our country. And that person is Jesus. Here's what it says in John 8. So if the Son, that's Jesus, sets you free, you will be free indeed. So Jesus sets us free. And that's something we should be thankful for every day. So let's pray together in thanks to God. Pray with me. Thank you, God, for the freedoms that we have in our country. And we especially thank you for the freedom that we have in our whole life through Jesus, your son. We pray this in his name. Amen. Thanks for coming up. So 17 years ago, I was going through a time of major changes and transition in my life. I had attended seminary to get my Master of Divinity degree. I'd studied religion in college. I'd really enjoyed studying religion, so I'd gone on to seminary, and I was going to get my Master of Divinity. I'd had a really positive experience as a chaplain intern, uh, so much so that I extended it from a one-unit experience to a four-unit experience. And then it came the time when you're required to do your pastor internship in a congregation. And the situation that I entered in the congregation that I was doing my internship was having a lot of problems, especially in leadership. And so the seminary decided to end the internship after four months. I know that was a good decision for my health and for the sake of my call. But it was also very painful, a very painful experience. And because of that, I made a decision at that time to uh, graduate with my Master of Arts and take some time to heal and to really sort things out. But what that meant was that I didn't have a plan, and I'd always had a plan. So I was in this place of transition where I didn't really know what was next. And during that time, the Minneapolis Metro bus line was running an ad on the back of their buses, and I happened to be stopped at a stoplight behind a bus, a few cars, 
And so I couldn't see the whole ad. I could only see the top part of the ad where I was parked. And it said, where are you going? And that hit me like a load of bricks at that time. Where was I going? It made my head just spin as I sat there waiting for the light to change. I didn't know. And if I did know where I was going, I didn't really know how to get there. And then the light changed, and the bus moved ahead. And I read the whole ad. It said, where are you going? We'll take you there. And I thought, my theological head's going, yeah, you know, I'm not in this alone. We'll take you there. That maybe the first step when facing a transition isn't desperately trying to answer the questions of the future, where, when, what, how, but rather to first ask the question, who is in this with me? And taking comfort in that promise that we are given, that the Spirit of God is in this with us. The beginning of Acts, we hear the story of the disciples following Jesus' resurrection and his ascension. And at this time, they find themselves not knowing up from down. Where are we going? What are we going to do now? What's next? They have a promise. They will receive the power of the Spirit who will come upon them and empower them to be witnesses across all the Roman Empire into the northern boundaries of Samaria and actually into the whole world. And they're excited because right now Jesus is with them and everything seems like it was before, only better. And Jesus is teaching them and leading them and commissioning them and they are hoping that this means that the kingdom of God is coming to Israel, that Israel will now rise up under his leadership and be an independent nation apart from the occupation of Rome. Is this the time of great change? They asked Jesus. And the answer is yes, great change is coming, but not in the form and way that they were expecting. Jesus leaves them. And with that, they feel shocked and fearful and alone. You see, Jesus had a next step in his process of where he was going. In our Apostles' Creed, we affirm our belief that Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. And when we say that, we don't mean that Jesus is seated at a throne in some frozen place in time and in some big throne room and a big castle in heaven separate from us. That's actually not at all what that means. What it means is that Jesus, we believe Jesus, received the full power and authority of the Creator so that he could reign over all creation and become the cosmic Christ that is fully present in the entire cosmos. Jesus is transformed in the, this moment to be even more present in our lives. A totally universal presence. That's what it means, seated at the right hand of the God not separate in a way in a frozen throne room, but fully present and universal, totally empowered. So Jesus had the next step to get where he was going, and his disciples are commissioned also to take next steps. Their next step is to live in the in-between time and wait. The first great act 
of the apostles in the book, the Acts of the Apostles, is to wait. But we don't like to wait. We're doers. That gives us a sense of accomplishment. It's how we measure worth and success. How, what we've done. How much we accomplish. But waiting has great value as well. Waiting helps us to focus on the who is in this with us rather than the how, where, what, and when we're going to get her done. Waiting has an active quality to it. Waiting is a deeply undervalued spiritual practice. The disciples waited in community. They removed themselves from distractions and they prayed together. Jesus' followers wait and in doing so they are practicing becoming a responsive community, responsive to God's direction and movement. And that is their first action learning to be responsive. In spiritual direction, there is a term called outrunning your God. It comes from the Quaker faith. Quakers condition in their faith, condition their attentiveness toward God, waiting for the Spirit to guide them in their work and in their callings. Sometimes when people become impatient, waiting for the Spirit to guide them, they begin to fill in the blanks themselves, and this is called outrunning your guide. Prayer and devotion to the mind and will of God, those are central acts to waiting and to resisting filling in the blanks, outrunning your guide. The Holy Spirit enables and guides the disciples' ministry, which you read throughout the book of Acts. And that same Spirit is present today, guiding us in our times of transition, in our moments of calling and wondering, what is my work to do? But how do we know? How do we practice this? What do we do, right? Because we still want to do something, even in the waiting. So here's what you do. It's pretty much laid out for us in chapter 1. First, we need to focus on what is happening now. That means removing the distractions of our worries and concerns and fears about what will happen later. When you get caught up that, bring yourself back to now. I call it finding your upper room. Second, we need to keep connected to a community, to a support system, to God. Here's what it says in Acts 1. They went to the upper room they had been using as a meeting place. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, son of James. They agreed that they were in this for good, that they were completely together in prayer, the women included, and Jesus' mother and his brothers. The third thing we need to do is pray. By praying, I don't just mean coming to Jesus with a list of our wants. That is a type of prayer. It's called petitions. But there are other ways and forms in which we can pray. Some may be more comfortable to you than others. We can pray by listening, by just being still. We can pray with gratitude lists. 
We can pray by reading scripture or devotions to start your day or close your day or both. We can pray by crying and laughing with friends. We can pray actively while we're walking or running. We can pray in that time, focus in on God. See, we're always learning to trust the Spirit as we go along in our lives wherever we're going. I remember a friend sharing a wise bit of wisdom those 17 years ago when I was wondering, where am I going? She said, everything you are, you are because you made it through the past. Everything you are, you are because you made it through the past. When you feel lost, you really aren't. When you don't know where to go or what to do, God wants you to be still. Hug a tree. Stay in one place. Because God is coming to you. Now, God is a quiet God, but a very present one. God knows your pain, and God knows what exactly will heal that pain. No matter how distant from God you may feel, God wants so much for you to feel God's love that he'd die for you. So claim your upper room, claim your community, and claim prayer. Trust the Spirit. And when life is in transition, do not seek first to find and know answers to the where, the what, the how, and the when of the future. But rather, first, focus on knowing who is taking you there. Because on God's bus, there is room for many. And God will take you there. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing in the risen life of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church, ups and downs, problems, tragedies and ordeals are part of the fabric of human life. We pray for God's reassurance and renewing spirit in every circumstance and life experience and that we are present and caring companions for people who hunger for hope, comfort, assistance, encouragement, or simply friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the earth, for forests and vineyards, marshes and springs, for grasslands and pastures, farmlands and orchards, Protect your creation from damage by earthquake, flood, wind, drought, fire, or hail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the ascension of our Lord. It is tempting to fix our gaze and attention heavenward, eagerly awaiting the day when we will be liberated from this life and place. We pray the Spirit will redirect our attention and energies to the work and ministry we have been called to and entrusted with here and now, serving our neighbor, sharing the gospel, and equipping disciples. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations, for those who govern and all who hold authority, for those who have been displaced by warfare, economic hardship, or disaster, especially the people of Manchester. We give thanks for the emergency services and for the many ordinary people who demonstrated compassion in responding to those caught up in the tragedy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Memorial Day, we remember and give thanks for men and women who have served in the armed forces and sacrificed their lives for the ideals of justice, peace, freedom, and well-being for our country, other nations, and people who suffer oppression and injustice in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up prayers of sympathy for friends and family of Pearl Rabenic Spots, Marilyn Bell's mother. Prayers of healing and wholeness for Vera Kimsey, for Marietta Young in relief of pain, and James Dean's recovery from surgery and his wife's health. We also pray for safety for those called to serve our country, James Allwart, Jacob Henry, Megan McKinley Daniel, Nathan Myers, John Umlin, T. Wilkinson, and Ryan Zinter. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Joining our voices with our faithful ones in every time and place, we offer our prayers in the name of the risen one, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
Merciful God, be known to us, O Lord, in the breaking of the bread, as you were made known to the disciples. Receive these gifts and the offering of our lives, that we may be your risen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of your Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphims, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy Lord. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and in this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father and the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. All are welcome. The table is prepared to come and receive the presence of Christ and the gift of his forgiveness of sin. We may begin communing.
I invite you at this time to take to hold the hand of the person next to you that you may receive the communion blessing together as a community. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. life-giving God. In the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection that we may show your glory to all the world. Through the same Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As far as announcements for today, uh, you'll note the insert for Vacation Bible School. Please read through that. We will have safe uh, child training next Sunday between services and highly recommend and encourage our volunteers to attend that and our shepherds. And we will um, be registering right now. So uh, please be thinking about Vacation Bible School. We need volunteers and also um, looking forward to that week with our children. Please receive the benediction. And now may the power of our Creator strengthen you. May the love of Jesus hold you dear and care for you. And may the wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide you now and forever. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make, make disciples, disciples, hunger for ministry, ministry nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, ministries offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God.